Book your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Welcome to Owen the Town. I'm Luke Gregory and here's what's coming up today. Luton keep their pre-season good form going with a 3-1 win away at Boreham Wood. And again, Carlos Mendes Gomez looks like he's becoming a hell of a footballer. 3-1 win. We'll discuss a little bit about that today. And also the news we've all been waiting for. Peli Rudder Kampanzu finally signing his contract extension. Something we're all pretty buzzing about. And uh, yeah, it's, it's about time. But he's over the line. And now we can start looking ahead to the new season. How good is it going to be with this team we've got going? And I'm with Dave tonight. Unfortunately, Luke Patara cannot be with us. He's currently uh, suffering with COVID. So uh, yeah. He's, is he uh, really? Yeah. He's is, not, that, is that what he said he's doing? He's, he's not doing too well. Oh, he's, he's genuinely got it. No, genuinely, yeah. I, he, uh, I he just thought it, was, I thought it was a ruse just to not come round. No, no. So basically, we I dropped him a text the other day and I was like, I think we should do a podcast because we didn't do one last week after the England final. Well, and cause, um, Rightly so, because we're quite depressed. Yeah, and Batara's like, it's not going to happen, mate. Got COVID. Um, so he's just chilling uh, at home, hopefully recovering well. And I guess also we should probably send our best wishes to Mick Harford as well, who is uh, fighting... Uh, prostate cancer right now which is uh yeah you know i, I think he sounds quite positive. Send him his he sounds wishes. quite positive about it um he wants everybody to to check really all us men should be checking regularly especially yep. at my age uh, and we we wish him well and hopefully he'll get through it and we'll see him back at the kenny real soon and i did read on on luton's official website that it was diagnosed in december last year so you'd you'd like to think that maybe it's gone in a good way since then and um, well, he's having extra therapy. That's the main thing. And uh, hopefully, you know, the medical team will do well for him, and he'll be back. He's another, a, he's a big legend. He's a big man. I was going to say for for you and well for everyone, but for you who's been through generations of Luton. Yeah, I mean, he is one of the. He is, you know, we we use the word legend quite a lot on this podcast, but Pelly. Well, okay, you can go with Pelly, and um, we can talk about Pelly in a bit. But Mick Hartford is a true, true Luton legend. And not one person, not one of any supporters can doubt that. Not one. He is the man. And he's led us well. He's played for us well. And even when he weren't playing for us, he helped us out. So, you know what I mean? You know, we just wish him the best for for his health. And we hope it gets better as soon as he can. It was nice to see all the football family on Twitter as well today sending wishes at like Chelsea did a nice little tweet about them um so many football clubs getting involved and and old old players that played with me because well, he's, a, so. he's a love he's a good man if you ever sat and talked to him you know he's a nice man and everybody respects him and respects his opinion you know he, he was a fantastic footballer he's a great ambassador for our club and he you know you can only wish him the best so I'm I'm gonna say stay positive Hopefully, Mick, you'll be back at the Kenny before you know it, and we can't wait to see you there. And in other news, it's, it's pretty hot, isn't it? It's pretty hot. <laughs> Stop moaning. Oh, my gosh. It's been you'll one be of moaning, days. You'll be moaning come, come October, November, when it's bloody cold at the football. I don't know who needs to know this, but I'm currently doing this podcast in my boxer shorts. Yeah, no, we didn't need so to know hot. that at all. And this is on video, but unfortunately, you can't see it on the video. But if you want to go... Oh, go why don't you just stand up and show them? No, no, it's not happening. Uh, we've got more important things to do and we like talk about um, Pelly Ruddock and Panzer. I think it's, it's the, the pace we have to start let's ignore the Bournemouth game and, and straight into Pelly. there was countless rumours going around uh, that he wasn't going to re-sign he was going to go to Blackburn or Middlesbrough but today Luton have just announced that he has signed a new contract extension which is a brilliant thing I tweeted just yesterday I think it was yesterday day before um, that the whole Pelly saga has been drawn out and I, I said at the time I thought it was down to agents, agents touting their players around. Now, you don't blame Paddy for that. He was at the end of his contract. He needed to make sure he was getting the best deal. I get that. But if he knew he was coming, he left it so long to tell us, didn't he? I'm pleased he signed. But, you know, if he hadn't, we'd have moved on. So, yeah, it's really good news. Does that complete our squad? Potentially. I think maybe one more. I think we might look at in, in centre mid. But 
I think with with this Pelly news, and it's a bit like you said, look, I think, and and people may disagree, but if you're at that stage like Pelly Ruddock, where you've been at a club for so many years, he, that's all he's ever known. Like, maybe he did want to have a look out. So, you know. You don't blame him for that, do you? I no, mean, exactly. And I think you, you can't be mad at him for that, or you can't say, well. I don't think anybody's mad at him for anything he's done. I just think, you know, it was just a bit drawn out. And uh, is that agent's fault? Is that his fault? Is he was just contemplating any other offers he was going? Was he just testing the water really or using it as a bargaining tool to get more you can't blame him you know he's been with us so long he's is he like the 24th uh in line of most games for the hatters ever i mean that's some achievement isn't it and he's two away from 300 as well which yeah, is that, that is amazing is that's amazing so it's it's good that he's signed um will he be as influential because we've got all the new signers who knows but you know it's good that he's signed we've got a massive squad right now yeah and I do think that going forward that he will hopefully keep improving and, and, and getting better. And I, I just think we've had this discussion so many times on the podcast and it's a lot easier when Batara's not here to have a discussion about is Pelly Ruddock a legend? Um, because I just think, again, like, I know Batara was saying, oh, well, he didn't want to sign or he was looking at other clubs. You know what Batara's like. But for me, I think this just proves again that Pelly is just a legend of this club. He loves it at Luton and he feels like it's it's a home and... To have eight years with us is phenomenal. For a player to stay that long is unreal These in, in this day and age. Most players will come to a club for a few years and go, I've always said along, the only loyal people to your football club are the supporters. We've, luckily, we've got a board full of supporters right now. And players will come and go, managers will come and go, um, but you'll always be there. So you look at players and you think, ah, oh, you know, the likes of... Uh, Pelly being there for this long of course when you look back you're going to go bloody hell what a great player what a legend he was because he, he is and if he's listening you are so you know I think for me what puts it in, into like perspective is that when Pelly Ruddock signed for the club I would have been like 15 oh no no way how old am I I don't know oh no I would have been like 18 right oh no that's just gone wait a minute we we'll have to figure this out when did he score against Dartford that would have been like 2014 Right. Maybe how long has he been at the club, Luke? How old am I? You're, uh, I you're been, 26. Would have been younger than that. Oh, uh, you know what? Forget it. Mass is not your strong point, is no, it? No, it's not. I really wanted to give Batara <laughs> a call uh, and get his opinion. I'm going to give him a call now on the okay, podcast. Okay, go for it. I don't know if he's going to answer because he's currently here with COVID. But let's just see if he does answer. If he answers, oh, I can't do it. I can't talk to you. It's where he's completely COVID. fine. He just wanted to get out of the podcast tonight. I don't think he's going to answer. Come on, answer Bataro, come on. No. Well, you'll be cutting that bit out. No, 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 this is all stay. He's not answered. Sorry. He's not can't... answered. Yeah. I wanted immediate reaction from Bataro, but you know what? I, I think he would be saying, look, he's, he's, he's happy with it. And, you know, it, like we said earlier, is our team now complete going into the new season? Do we need any more players? Because we are looking at this... Uh, Lester Baylor from Leicester as a potential loan move. Um, I thought I he's thought, been on trial. I thought Nathan said he didn't want any loans. Well, he always says they won't do a loan unless it's the right fit or they need it. So yeah. it could potentially be that we, we do look at him and bring him in on a season-long loan. But I think our squad is looking pretty complete at the moment. And if we look at the friendly against Boreham Wood, some three-word reviews from that game, 3-1 to Luton. Uh, Kieran says, Carlos Mendes Gomez. Ross, Morel don't leave. Richard says, friendlies don't count. Jamo says, piss in the league. <laughs> Oliver, Jordan Clark's magic. Mark says, goals, son, win. Uh, Cameron says, I couldn't go. Alfie, good second half. Um, Richard says, friendlies don't count. And look, I know, obviously, the results don't matter in friendlies, but it must be good to get a bit of momentum in friendlies and it's good just to get that team cohesion going and in certain phases of movement and play and passing it's good for that isn't that's, it that's the word totally team cohesion we've we've had so many new entries into the squad that you need to get them playing you need to give them real real match time okay it's not it's not the biggest challenge is it but it's getting them playing and getting them moving and practicing the moves and and how nathan wants them to play um so yeah, that that's why you have friendlies. Yeah, they don't count, but you know what? It, you can get you can get a good idea how the squad's gelling for total thing. I mean, let's let's be honest. <clears throat> um, Gomez looks fantastic. Yeah, his goal top draw and and Clark 
We like Clark last season. You know, why why did he slip under the radar for so long? He's been brilliant and he can only get better. Yeah. And I think when it comes to preseason friendlies, like we said, it's, it's for someone like Carlos Mendes Gomez as well and, and that and that type of player. Maybe it is just we get into trying new things. So I don't think like saying obviously like friendlies it's not like they're not important because it is as well putting everything you've practiced in this month of preseason to you know on the pitch is is putting it out there to see if it's working and it's getting you match ready listen by the time we get to our first game at the Kenny proper game everyone and it's a full house everybody wants to win that game everybody wants to start the season well <clears throat> and the only way you can do do that is get yourself prepared and and, and you know the the, the smaller clubs that you play in, in these pre-send and friendlies are probably the best way of doing it. A bit like Saturday, small club in Portsmouth. Well, I didn't want to say that, but, um, you know, even the Portsmouth game, that steps it up a level, doesn't it? And then the Brighton game steps it up another level. And they're doing two hours against Brighton. Yeah. So that gets all the squad rotation in that you need to see. And, and Nathan Jones will be picking his side from that, I would imagine. I do like the fact that we do... <coughs> We seem to do pre-season the same every single year. It, it, it is like we start off with a couple of really low league teams, then we step up with a League One team, and like you said, like a Premier League team. And the four quarters doesn't seem that bad on paper, but when you're there, it's very, very long. Very long. Well, I'd hate to say this, but I'm deliberately staying away until the first league game um, because I want it to matter. And I want to go there and I really want to make sure... I and you don't want to get an NHS ping on your phone telling you you're going to have to isolate and miss the first I've game. Turn it off, mate. It ain't happening. Oh, you can't do that. I've done it. I'm, it's not happening. I'm going. I'm not going. <laughs> well, we haven't seen COVID, we haven't seen COVID Botaro for a couple of weeks, have we? So, no. you no. know, so it won't work. And looking at the, the friendlies then over the weekend, so we've got Portsmouth on Saturday... I'm not sure how many fans are going to be going to this, but you'd like to think a couple of thousand will be will be going. I think I read today or either heard it on the news that the EFL and the Premier League is still unsure whether they're going to let 100% capacity into stadiums. There was talk about 75%. Really? I think Man United have a friendly coming up. Well, can I just say at this point? Which is going to be at 75%. I'll be one of those 75%. I'm going. Even if I have to use my new season ticket card... In a different way. No, how can they stop you going? They've lifted all restrictions. All the theatres are open. There was 140,000 supporters at the British Grand Prix at the weekend. How can they not let 10,000 into Luton's ground? That's rubbish. And if they don't, there should be a lot of action taken against it. Well, fingers crossed they will. Do you reckon Saturday with this Portsmouth game then will be a game where we do start seeing maybe Nathan Jones mould his... His team He's a bit more. 11. And yeah, yeah, maybe absolutely. start trying and going, you know what, I'm going to play this team now for 65 minutes and 70 minutes. And I think I think you stepped up a level with Portsmouth, providing they send a uh, you know, half-decent team. Um, I'm I'm hopeful that he, he, he does. He starts trying to think, what is my starting 11 going to be for the first game? It's quite important. I wonder if Morel's going to get a shout this, this time. I mean, he played fairly decent at the weekend. He had a good uh, Euros as well, so... I'm I'm looking for for that inspiration, and I think maybe you know like Bataro absolutely spoke up Morel, didn't he? All of the time, does he fit in the team with Pelly alongside him? I don't know. I just generally don't know. And do you think he knows his strongest eleven right now, no. Nathan Jones? No, I think he's got. I think he's recruited well. He's recruited for the future for all the young people in. Um, who's going to start up front? You know that sort of thing. Um, does he know his best 11? No, I think he's probably got some idea. He's working on it. But, you know, the next couple of games might show him. It must be really difficult as a manager, actually. Having, like, you look at our team and it's a selection headache. And it is like that front three. I think we spoke about it last week. Do you play Clark? Do you play Cornick? Do you play Mendes Gomez on your dimnia? Do you play Jerome? Or Ad- well, just, Adebayo's got a start, It's surely? ridiculous, isn't it? It's ridiculous. But what a nice position to be in, considering where we've come from. And I know we keep saying that, but... You know, it wasn't that long ago we was pulling our hair out because we couldn't get out of the bloody conference. And look at our squad now. Our squad is amazing. Um, the management team at Luton, you've just got to trust them. I said that last week, last time. you just got to trust their judgment. Uh, by, by hook or by crook, he'll find his best start in 11. But also the subs will, t- will play a, a really big part in our, in our season. 
and squad rotation maybe even more. Yeah, well, I think last year there was a number of games where it looked like we kind of suffered from not having good strength and depth, and we were knackered. There were stages where you know where Lockyer's got injured, and like Cal's name Naismith. To be fair to him, played really well at centre half, but if you could have brought in like a more natural centre half, like we have with like Reese Burke potentially, it's for us probably only going to benefit us going forward. I just I sit here and I think to myself, when was the last time I remember the squad changing so much? You know, you, you expect one or two signings, maybe, maybe three or four, but what we had, nine? Eight, nine, nine. Yeah, I think it's like nine. eight or nine. And, and that's incredible bit of work, incredible. And everybody said they came because once they spoke to Nathan Jones, they, they wanted to come, they were excited by his vision for the football club. And as am I, I can't wait to get back there. Patricia Jacobs put on our running order today, <laughs> some transfer rumours. Um one of them is Danny Hilton to Hartlepool. Unsure where he saw this, but I trust him. I trust him that this is a rumour that's out there. Um, Danny Hilton's time is, is definitely up now, isn't it? I can't see him staying. Um, you know, he was he did what he needed to do, and he played for us, and he played well for us, and he, you know, top bloke. However, I can't see him even getting on the subs bench. No. So for his own sake and his own career, um, he needs to find a new contract. And but yeah, Hartlepool at wouldn't. the age of of which Danny Hilton is as well and you look at what he's done for us he's been a fan favourite and I think yeah. he will be remembered forever just because of the type of player he was and opposition fans absolutely hated him but we just uh, loved him didn't we he how, was just he was just brilliant well because because of how he reacts and how he you know he was a strong player he scored goals but he also knew how to um, should I say go to the, imp- the opponents you know how to well shithousery is the word yeah. that everyone uses um was, was it Stevenage when he ran over to them? I can't remember. Cambridge slid in Cambridge. front of the keepers. Yeah, well, yeah, good. But he got booked for that, but, you know, yeah. how good was that? So he was a proper Luton player, a proper Luton forward. And, and what he brought when he came to the club was that strength that we didn't have there. You know, that that almost, uh, I don't, uh, maybe I'm saying too much, but maybe like that Mick Harford strength, you know, we hadn't had since Steve Howard, maybe. Yeah. And he was just great at winding up opposition fans and opposition it. players. It's the one that sticks out in my head as well is Sunderland away when he he gets that penalty. Bataro oh. Shamrock. Look at this, everyone. Luke Bataro, you are live on the podcast. How are you, mate? Am I actually live on the podcast, or are you just taking no, this? No, <laughs> no, no, you're live on the podcast, Bataro. Please do not say. <laughs> I can't do that. Please do not swear. Fuck all bugger. Please do not say fuck all bugger. But all right, how are you all? I'm on channel four. Hello. How's um how's COVID treating you, mate? Fucking horrendous, mate. Yeah? Yeah, I'd rather kill myself or shit in my hands and clap than fucking have this shit. <laughs> well, no, no, that's, that's that's a bit extreme. Maybe the second one you could do. No, yeah. no. Can I just no, say, not, did, mate, did, you not, did you not hear the opening line that you're live on the podcast and you've opened up with those lines, man? Come on. Oh, sorry. I thought he was actually joking. So no, like, we're literally live <laughs> now. Oh, great. Well, sorry. Bataro, we, we originally called you because we wanted your your immediate reaction to the news that Pelly Ruddock signed a new, a new yeah, deal, mate. Yeah, I've literally just seen it, mate, about literally 30 seconds ago. And I saw your phone call. And I thought, hang on a minute, let me guess. You phoned me, it's about Pelly, obviously. But yeah. But yeah, um, hmm. weird, wasn't it? Didn't think it was going to happen. But you're happy it's sure happened no now. Did. I'll be honest, I have no feeling towards it. No feeling at all? You're not like a little bit excited nah, or buzzing? Really. Nah, not really, I'll be honest. I mean, it took him long enough, didn't it? He did I take him a while. Uh, I thought he was kind of power. <laughs> Isn't that what I said he would say? Yeah, he actually said that. But the thing is, you know, he took he took a long time to make that decision. But aren't you pleased now? He's he's committed himself to the football club for a, for, for the next season at mm. least. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I share your same views, but mm. is he now a legend? It's, it's like it's, no, no, no. What is he going to take? I mean, What's he going to take him to? Talk to three different clubs. If you can hold talks to three different clubs and then sign a new contract because you actually realise you're better off there than feeding me shooting. <laughs> oh man, come on! <laughs> we were just saying earlier. No, in all time no. Hatter's history, in all times Hatter's history of appearances for the football club, he's twenty fourth in all yeah, time. I know. Surely that's got to give yeah, him some sort. Of... Well, yeah, I mean, he only wanted five more appearances, didn't he, to reach three hundred for the milestone? That's pretty why we're probably leaving January. Well, it doesn't matter. We have got a great squad. No, yeah, but no, look seriously though. Look, I mean. 
I, I, don't, I don't know what's out there. I mean, no one does, but at the same time, I mean, it's great news for most people. And I'd say probably 35% of the club are also the supporting supporters, should I say. You have to excuse them a bit doped up right now. Um, not like that even before we start saying things. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's good news for people around there. Really, but, you know, what's the circumstances? I'd like to know. Because as far as I was concerned, he would leave in. I think we all thought it, but no, look. It's, Maybe I mean, he spoke to a few other clubs, though, Bataro, and thought, you know what? This isn't, you know, I want to stay where I am. I'm, I'm happy where I am. I can go get yeah, a little bit more yeah. money, negotiate a bit, and Luton want me, then they can have me, but pay, pay me a little bit extra. Yeah, maybe, but then saying that, Nathan Jones did say last week, didn't they, about a lucrative deal was on the table since April or whatever. Well, so, I mean, it's been there for him. But that's, that's, um, that's Pelly's agent's job, isn't it? To get the best deal for his, yeah, for his client. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, that's what he's done. Obviously, he's happy to stay. He knows he knows what the football club's about. And to, to be fair, he loves the football club. And we've helped to make him what he is. So, you know what? Good luck to him. I hope he, I hope he does well. And I hope he stays for a bit longer. And I hope yeah, he has a great fair, season. Of course. I mean, and I hope at some point, Bataro, well. at some point you're going to think back and go, actually, Pelly was a legend. Well, yeah, let's hope. I mean, you know I mean, but yeah, legend's a big old word, isn't it? A big old. Uh, I thing. would, I would love but, um, to see. I'd love to see what your absolute criteria are for legends. I think you need to write that down while you're in isolation, so you can tell us when you come back. <laughs> mm. oh, I don't think I can pick up a pen right now. <laughs> oh, I could barely pick up the phone. But yeah, um, no, I mean, look, it's the same time. I need to take the piss in certain aspects, but no, I mean, look, it's pretty great around, isn't it? But you know. It's just a, it's a bit of a weird one. I think no one expected it. It's a bit of a shock. I'll be honest, I saw it before even phone boys, but literally, like I said, 30 seconds prior to that, I was in a little state of shock. I mean, I had to feel, I was like, yeah, is it one of those? Well, I don't know. But <laughs> it kind of come out of nowhere as well. A bit shitty. Yeah, 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 massively. Because the thing is, I was reading links this morning saying, like, so he's going elsewhere, he's in talk to Turkish club, blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And then, you know, but, nah, look, at the same time, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty good news. I mean, massive cat turned around the dressing room, isn't it? so it's been a bit. On it, boys. It's been a bit of a bad news, good news day today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah obviously. But sorry, we did touch on Mick Harford uh, fighting prostate yeah, cancer, which yeah. is yeah, man, sad, yeah. isn't it? But um, it's like they've just said bit of bit of bad news this morning and some good news in the evening, and it's just. The football, the football's shaping up in it now. It's just getting closer and closer mm-hmm. to the day of, of playing, and it's just really exciting, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's all well. It's always well, and you know, often it's shy of that isolation, or whatever else, and we all get back to football as soon as possible, and with everyone else, and hopefully, no one else gets it, and we can all get it back there, and all seem to get older. I mean, there's probably a few missing, but let's all hope that we can all get back together, do the whole shit, do the whole thing, and then crack on, boys, because. But Tara, have you not We've just announced it. COVID? You, you you didn't want to go back to work for a couple of weeks. Is that what it was? <laughs> oh, I wish, man. I'll, I'll be honest, man. My, it's, it's, my, it's, it's a weird one, man. It's a weird... Uh, I expected like, the flu and the sore chest and I'm just getting real bad pains all over my body, up my spine, my legs, everything. Like it crippled. Have you gone for that vaccination yet? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, man. <laughs> You're old enough. Yeah, you say Go that, though, but I've also got a friend. I've also got a friend that tested uh, positive. He's been double vaccinated, and he's a lot worse than me. So that's bullshit at the same time. So yeah, fair enough. All right. Well, let's not get into let's not get into COVID and, and vaccinations and stuff. But I will let you get back to your bed, mate. In this thirty yeah. degree heat, and, and enjoy yeah, your bed, evening. Mate. I'm literally laying outside. Ah, we'll, we'll let you get back to outside then, mate, and uh, we'll catch up with so you soon. Wanna... Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Nice to speak to you, boys. Anyway, yeah, well done. See you soon, Bye, boy. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye. Living the best life, isn't he? Currently, uh, <laughs> lying in in the garden in, in this heat. Um, let's end on some Instagram questions for today. Then, I like this one from Anthony. Says, "Why do you think they haven't released the new kits yet?" And because they don't know whether they're putting my name on the shirt. I'm 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 hoping it's not going to be in the armpit or somewhere like that. I want it. So I've asked them to put it in the middle of the shirt so I can see it. See, think thing with that shirt as well. I think they knew what that was going to look like when they did it last year. They clearly had it all planned out. And I don't know. I think from working in football, you know, these things, there's there's always something that's just waiting to be signed off or, or 
well, if true. there's a new potentially a new sponsor but, that's bringing in a bit of extra money for the club or it, it's got to be something like that all surely. the extra work we do all the extra work that the club have put in to do everything else but every season they have a kit change it's always takes so long you, every time they release a shirt it takes forever it's hardly it hardly comes out maybe the week before the season starts maybe you'll see them wearing the new shirt at one of the friendlies at the Kenny um, all I know is that you know my birthday's coming up, and and you're waiting for a new one. I'm waiting for a new be, one. Nothing's gonna drop before uh, Saturday, mate. But yeah, no, you can but that's hope. right. But you can you can just you know put it in the post. It doesn't matter. Hope. Uh, Tom says with one more signing expected. Where do you think we still need to improve? It's a it's a tough question, isn't it? But you'd probably say the midfield, and that's why we are looking at Lesher Baylor and producer Jake has put on here. There's rumours that we're looking at Josh Benson from Burnley, who's a centre mid and apparently highly rated. What type of player are they, though? I'm not too sure. See, I, I I have to be honest. I don't know. Are they a physical Kevin Nichols type player, or are they like um? What's the word I'm looking for, Luke? Give me give me that answer. Yeah, more like a Izzy Brown. Yeah, but not Izzy Brown. But not as good. Not, Izzy, not Izzy Brown amazing. was rubbish compared to who replaced him. So it's difficult, isn't it? Because we don't we haven't really seen the squad playing, have we? Nathan will know what he wants. He's I not come back to with him our now. squad at the moment. Um, Jamie here said, "What what would your starting eleven be if this season started today?" And it's just such a question Good that gracious, yeah, off the top of your head at like this stage of pre season, it's kind of like you don't really. I just look at so many players and think I'd probably start him, but I'm like, oh no, but then what about him? And it's well, Sluger in goal. Yeah, there you go. That's me done. Yeah, and then I'd go for a, a fullback. Sorry to YouTube, by the way, our, our, our movies just cut out, so you're currently just listening to us. You know what? Everyone can wait whilst we go and start the movie again. Hey guys, it's going to be weird. And the first time for uh, everyone seeing us here. We need to get a new cameraman. Oh, I can't even find the record button. Oh, there it is. Found it. Done it. Um, Hello, YouTube. We're back. <laughs> so I'll go for a back four of Kyoso, Bradley, Kyoso. Lockyer, Lockyer. And we'll put Potts at left back because... I don't know about Amari Bell because I haven't seen much of him yet because he's away on international duty. I played Campbell. He scored an OG this weekend. Yeah, I saw that. Campbell, Pelly. Campbell's got a start, hasn't he? And, oh gosh, see, there's so many. I've even forgotten who our other centre mids are. Ray. Ray can play Holden. Then I'd play Cornick, Mendes Gomez and Adebayo. That's my starting 11 of the season start tomorrow. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll go what you say, but I haven't had time to sit down and think about it. It's definitely an exciting one and hopefully one we can get a clearer answer on in the next couple of weeks when we get to see a few more games and especially now testing ourselves against higher opposition. I missed out Clark though, that's the thing. Yeah, see, you see... You, I missed you, out Clark. You, you, you I want to play Kyoso at right back. You so. need to write the whole squad down and you need to really analyse where it's really... If you'd have given this half an hour ago, we might have been able to sit down and, and talk about it before we came on. But um, it's exciting, isn't it? Isn't it exciting times we have that dilemma? Yeah, really exciting. And I, you know, I can't wait for the new season. It's... It's exciting for me because I've finally got myself a season card now. And uh, well, uh, to be fair, you only, you only had one season we didn't have a ticket. Yeah, you know, and, well, it's, and you, you've had a ticket for for as long as I can remember. Yes, but it's so. nice to finally be able to potentially go again in the new season. So I look forward to it. I think we are going to call it a day there. The today's podcast, a nice little pre-season one. Bataro did finally join us on the phone, which was nice and. Next week, I am going to be away, so I'm going to task you with doing a podcast. Are you? Oh, good. And I'll get I'll get a couple of mates in. That'll be fun. You'll have to. You maybe get Bataro on the phone or something, but I'm going to be away at St. George's Park for a week. So oh, I'll cut you. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to I'll do be a podcast. I'll be at St. George's Park. Hopefully then, I'll be back to do one after the Brighton game in the build-up to Peterborough, first game. I just, I just really can't That's wait for the good. first game. I'm so excited. I haven't seen... I haven't seen the Hatters for so long. I cannot wait to get back. I can't, I can't imagine what the atmosphere is like. I'm, I'm so looking forward. I can't believe how excited I am it's to gonna, go back. I don't want to go... It's bumpy, in it? When oh, no, because it, it means so much to get back there and have a full house. And, we, and we'll all be feeling the same. And we all might take a few beers in. And not into the stadium, obviously, but a few beers before we go. I'm gonna, I love it. Can't wait. So you enjoy St George's Park. And we'll uh, try and see everyone next week. If I'll get right. I'll get a team together to do another podcast. Cool, lovely stuff. Well, thanks so much for listening. Thanks very much for watching as well and bearing with us when our camera cut out. We don't normally do that. We normally just do cut. I have but to it's do hot, the, isn't do it? Do I have to so. do the camera thing next week? 
Uh, we'll see. Maybe. Okay. Uh, that's all we've got time for today. Then thanks so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you next week.